Hello, future FC families. I'm Cheyenne Jolier, your club's director of coaching and your host of The Parent Corner, an educational series here on our very own YouTube channel. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content. Today, we're going to be discussing six tips to foster a stronger relationship with your child's team, coach, and the club as a whole. But first, here's a funny little tongue-in-cheek video on how not to act. I might be biased, but she's clearly the greatest player to wear cleats since Mia Hamm. However, I think that with some changes to your coaching style, she could be even better. Really? What makes you say that? Well, when she was younger, as he scored goals all the time. I see. Was she the biggest kid on the field? Yes. Was she the fastest kid on the field? Well, of course. She was the oldest kid in the entire league. Our whole team was. They had played together since they were three years old and dominated the rec league. I see. You know that in club soccer, she's going to play against big fast kids like her from here on out, right? Well, of course. But she should still be the best player ever. Before we got here, she could boot the ball farther up the field than anyone else, but now you scream at her whenever she kicks it a long way. I don't understand why. All the parents cheer when she boots it towards the other goal. I'm trying to teach her to keep the ball under control. Plus, she hits everything with her toe and has no idea where it's going. It's going up the field. Isn't that the whole point? We want the girls to feel comfortable with the ball at their feet, like you see older, better players do in other countries around the world. Oh, we don't watch soccer, unless my daughter's playing, but I've watched enough of her games to know how it's supposed to work. Let me give you some pointers, coach. Sure. First of all, my daughter should play up top all the time. That's a given. Then you should put all the fat, slow girls in the back. This whole step up, stay connected business needs to go. Just have the fat slow girls stay back in the goalie box. They should just kick it as far as they can when it comes to them. All right. I don't know why you don't spend more time working on special plays for throw-ins and goal kicks either. Those happen all the time, so they must be important. We have lots of restarts because the girls can't keep the ball. I'm trying to teach them how to receive a ball and keep it under control. Right. Stop that. Just teach all the girls to kick it a long way like my daughter does, and we'll be fine. By the way, why do some girls kick the ball the wrong way? Are they stupid? We want the girls to play the way they're facing, so our team can keep possession of the ball. Right. Stop that. The players should just try to kick or dribble the ball straight up the field. What about the other team? Well, if our girls are strong enough, they should just knock them over. If they are not strong enough, then they shouldn't be out here. In fact, I don't know why we keep so many girls in the group. We only need the best six players, plus a couple of subs. We train large numbers of girls so that we can have full-sized teams when they are older. We are preparing for the future so that your daughter will have other solid players to play with when she's older. Right. Stop that. We just want to win right now. In fact, we should win every game by 10 goals. Why do you play the bad players so much? We try to give every player opportunities to play while the result is still in doubt. That way, they learn to play under pressure. Plus, the kids have more fun when they compete. Right. Stop that. I never want my daughter to lose a game. In fact, I never want my daughter to feel pressured in any way. Don't challenge her to try harder. Just tell her she's great. Don't correct her. It's bad for her self-esteem. Perhaps you and your daughter should watch some soccer together. Has she ever seen Mia Ham play? No, but we have seen her in commercials. She's always kicking the ball hard towards the goal, so that must be all there is to the game. Anyway, we've seen soccer in movies. 
kicking and screaming, Ladybugs, the big green, soccer mom. Maybe you should watch those movies, you can learn a lot about the game from those stories. They have lots of realistic soccer action. Why not just watch an actual game? The USA women's team is playing on television tonight. Oh, we don't have time for that. I have to get my daughter to gymnastics, then to her karate class, then to her dance class. But she loves soccer the most. The couple of hours she spends booting a soccer ball at practice is the highlight of her week. Do you offer extra sessions? Well, yes. But I give the girls plenty of things that they can practice at home already. Oh, she never touches her soccer ball unless she's at practice or a game, but she loves the sport. Coach, we are behind you 100%. By the way, what was the name of the coach whose team we just played? I don't know. He's just a guy who wanted his own team. I'm not sure he even played soccer growing up. I'm pretty sure he played football, offensive line, by the looks of him. I wonder if his email address is online. His girls were big and fast, and could boot the ball a long way. Anyway, we are behind you 100% coach. See you next week. Man, you gotta admit, that was some funny stuff. But now let's get to our tips. Number one, you gotta always find fun in the game. Not only when things are good, but also in the bad. Remember, your child's career is but a blip in time, and no need spoiling it by you living vicariously through them. There's no question that for some, the game is a very high priority. But in my experience, the families who have maintained balance have been the most successful and look back at their club experience with very fond memories. Number two, keep your child's ability in perspective. The reality is the likelihood on a professional career is extremely low. And for those of you who are statistic driven, the NCAA has stated that only 7% go on to play at any level collegially. That's not to say there isn't exceptions and your child may be one of the very fortunate few who can go on to the next level, but allow your coach to create the environment for growth and you as a parent facilitate that growth through love and support. Number three, get on the same page. Understand the coach's philosophy as well as our club game model. Let this be a source of inspiration to not only ask your coach questions, but have genuine dialogue with your child. Have your child teach and explain their role to you and what they are learning and what the playing objectives look like. Of course, some kids will give you the I don't know, but I guarantee that your child knows way more about the game than they let on. See what you can do to have those discussions. Number four, honor the 24 hour rule. That's gotta be at the minimum. Before addressing any questions or concerns, especially after a tense game or training session, allow 24 hours to gather your thoughts, gain clarity, and dissipate any negative emotions that could create a poor discussion environment. Remember, we're looking for solutions and everyone works better with cooler heads. And number five, avoid coaching. Future FC views any advice that has an effect on the player's decision-making as coaching. So saying things like pass it quick, dribble, shoot the ball are examples and are viewed as coaching and can lead to an action that goes against the player's very unwanted or needed decision, and furthermore, it goes against the very process or objective the coach is looking for out of his or her player. Conversely, we understand that soccer is an emotionally driven game, so we're not looking for quiet spectators. Things like good job, way to work hard, nice pass or shot go a long way from taking the pressure off the kids. And lastly, number six, keep those emotions in check. Listen, soccer is an invasive game with lots of contact. Our players are going to get fired up and we need them and their coach to work through it. Once we add fuel to the embers, we stand a bigger chance it turns into a full-fledged fire. Also, referees make bad calls from time to time. Right now, there is a huge shorter of referees due to the fears of retribution and we don't need to be associated with that kind of poor behavior. So in short, let's respect our players and staff, our own fellow supporters, the opponent and their supporters, and of course, the officials. Let's be the standard of which all others model themselves from. Well, that concludes today's Parent Corner. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email me or leave a comment down below of any topics you'd like to hear from us. Don't forget, if you haven't done so, to subscribe, like, and smash that notification bell to be updated on any new content. Have a good one.